Thank you very much for the invitation and the organization. Being uh, very happy to be back to present this paper. I'm also in the learning process of the recycling. So if you have comment, questions, they are more than welcome. Help me to make the paper better. So now today's topic is mainly about critical mineral. Let's see what are critical mineral, what are the situations. So my presentation will follow. I'll give you some about the fact. What are the literatures about this kind of situations and what we can do? And of course, the potential questions. Uh, the first one is related to the demand side. In May 2021, would mean just last year, the International Ed Energy Agency had a special report about the critical mineral. And they state clearly that a typical electric car requires six times the mineral, uh, mineral inputs of the conventional car. The onshore wind plant requires nine times more mineral input than the gas-fired plants. And to, in the same report, they stay estimate that to reach to the Paris Agreement target, the share of the total demand rise uh, in the next two decades, for example, 40% over copper and the rare earth element, and 60 to 70% for nickel and cobalt, which are essential for the battery of the electric cars, and almost 90% for the lithium. Obviously, since the, the new information we had, the Emirates will starting to produce uh, lithium in France in 2028, the situation mean, slightly releases the pressure. Then the question is, what are the critical minerals? The basic one, the, the, the critical mineral from the both EU and US definition was they were essential to the economic development and the state security, but the supply chain facing disruptions. For example, the rare earth element in both EU and the US define a, a rare earth element as one of the critical minerals. Actually, there were 17 on the group. There were 17 of them. They related to a lot of technologies related to clean technology. And but it's almost everywhere. For example, our iPhone has a few grams. This computer has a few grams. The wind uh, turbine has about 110 of rare earth element. Each uh, electric car has almost one kilo of the rare earth element. Uh, it is important for, I mean, even daily life. And the computer, one example they use in the computer or iPhone, I don't know, some of us are too young to know. I mean, now we could see the screen from here, from different angles, we can see that is, they suppose, because of the contribution of rare earth element. When I was a PhD in Luana Nerf, we have this old uh, Bentham 386, about a lot of years ago, compared to most of you. And you only streak here, you can see the screen. If you move, you cannot see the screen because we don't use the rare earth element. And the lithium is another one, another example of the critical mineral. It's essential for the battery of electric cars. And nickel is also another one. It is combining with lithium for the battery, but though currently the steel, most of them, 90% was used in the stainless steel. Titanium is another could be potentially the rare earth element because the weight, uh, strength and weight ratio, they are much better than the steel, um, but it's less uh, carbon intensive than the steel. So it could be potentially important. And especially if we consider, for example, most of the plane, the uh, satellite, and the, uh, those kind of stuff related to the use of the titanium. And uh, so, the question is, we need this critical mineral, but if they are everywhere and it's easy to, to, to find, then it's not an issue. The problem is the supply chain facing some kind of constraint. For example, the International Renewable Energy Agency, the newly, newest report stated that about rare earth element, the mining 85, uh, 58%, the purification 90%, and 
magnet production, permanent magnet production, 90% are concentrated in China. Even the U.S., the mountain pass, produce, I mean, mine some of the raw material, but they ship it to China to process. Of course, pollution control regulation is one reason. The other reason is Chinese technology invests heavily in the purification and uh, uh, processing. So it's much economically correct to ship it there. But that created the other question that is, for example, the United States Ge Geological Survey in the past years, about 80% U.S. refined rare earth element come from China. And the production of titanium in the U.S. from 2021, the last mine closed, U.S. doesn't produce anymore, but we know that NASA need the uh, titanium and the Boeing need titanium. And for rather China and the Russian produce two thirds of the world total supply. And Europe is not much better. Even some situation is even worse. It does not directly enter the competition. For example, rare earth element, 98% from China, and they don't produce, it doesn't have any production of uh, rare earth at all. And the uh, lithium, 78% come from Chile. But of course, after the Emirates starting to supply to the market, the situation will be changed. Still, for some years, that was the, the concern. And before the war, 65% of the titanium used by Airbus come from uh, uh, Russia. So facing this kind of situation, not only about this supply chain may be disrupted because the main house of competition, the trade war, for example, between China and the US, the rare earth element, it was one of the uh, instrument under discussion. Okay, so that is the situation. But except this one, the supply chain issue, actually, there is also exhaustion of this resource. And the growth actually in 2010 had a quite pessimistic estimation. It's not necessarily about the critical mineral. He was talking about just iron raw, which is, seems like a plenty, but based on his estimation, based on the past years, uh, growth rate of extraction. It's not the economic growth rate, it's extraction rate here. If based on 2% growth annually, and in one century, we will exhaust the original, the known reserve. And plus the recycling is changing a little bit, I mean, postponed a little bit, but cannot fundamentally solve the issue. And his proposal is we should stop the growth, but of course, Stopping the growth is also uh, troublesome. And for the rare earth element, uh, here I cited the, the uh, uh, notation here, is actually some of the elements will be exhausted in 20, 30 years, which is not very far. So we're facing two problems. On the one side, uh, there is a monopoly supplier, more or less a monopoly supplier. And on the other side, the resource is depleting. So that to reduce the bottleneck risk and to guarantee the supply to the market, the transition from the dirty to clean technology by recycling and the substitution is needed. And of course, the substitution uh, depend. Sometimes we can find the technology substitution is possible, sometimes we cannot. But, so recycling at least is a temporary strategy or we can rely on. So which are the state of the strategy of the recycling? So far, a lot of the material can be recycled. For example, the most well-known is aluminum and copper and iron. For example, the in 2000. 12, the London Olympic Games, the London Tower, 60% of the London Tower come from recycled material from the uh, old cars, from the washing machine, and so on, was actually uh, done in Luxembourg, uh, the recycling. So that part is fine, but the rare earth element, the lithium, even some other part element of the platinum group, 
the recycling technology either doesn't exist or we could recycle some, but it is too costly economically and environmentally to do so. For example, the lithium, uh, lithium battery is only 1% recycled in the US and EU, the two big markets. And rather some other, the lead acid batteries are almost 99% recyclable. So there is this situation that the recycling technology does not exist. And we need to rely on some of those technology which doesn't exist. So that is the question. That is what we would like to see under different market structure. When should the recycling technology be ready to use? Uh, in the literature of R&D research and so on, it's more say, okay, if you put a lot of money there, the technology, the invention will be created, like the, the vaccine if you just pile up money. But of course, pile up money is costly. So if we could rely on the original resource, postpone the recycling, somehow it's economically more reasonable. But if the recycling technology is possible, what will be the situation between the exporter, the monopoly uh, supplier, and the importing country? And the last question is, OK, now we could recycle. Of course, if you can recycle one time, you could recycle another time for quite a lot of the uh, mineral. Could that solve the problem of not enough resource? Could be about, don't worry, we could just keep recycling. So that is, that are the questions we would like to answer. So then the next point is, what has already been done? Isn't there enough already said about recycling? So the literature about recycling quite a lot was based on the aluminum market and was inspired by the actually after World War II, the situation in the US. There, indeed, there is monopoly virgin supplier of the aluminum company of American, Alcor, with competitive recycling sector. The early work of uh, Gaskin and Swan and Martin and the more uh, recent work of Van Long and Barr, they were inspired by this group of recycling uh, competition with the monopoly suppliers. So they studied the social welfare, the pricing dynamics, the market power, the long run composition of the market, and also the consumer contribution to the recycling, if we separated the waste or not, and so on. So a lot had already been said, but it doesn't work to the critical mineral, which I just mentioned, on the one side, the recycling technology doesn't exist, not to mention the competitive sector. And secondly, they do not consider the resource could be exhausted because they were actually, most of them consider the long run position and it's still the, well, the market of the origin resource that they were recycling. So obviously, that's not exactly matching our situation that in one century or half century, the, there's no more or virgin resource can be used. And all of them fundamentally consider one economy. The early contribution based on the uh, American market, the US market, so it's one economy between the, the, two, the monopoly supplier as a competitive sector. And the later contribution is more about world economy, but we are facing the definition of critical mineral is more about importing country and exporter. Or put it more precisely, the China, Chile, with EU and the US. So obviously those group of literature cannot directly use to this one. So the more general uh, consideration of recycling are these two seminar papers is Weinstein and Zuckhauser, they consider uh, the deplot indeed they consider all different kind of uh, uh, mineral, including diamonds and so on. Uh, but the fundamental difference is the depletable supplier and the recyclable sector are competitive. 
and they consider from the central planner's point of view how to get the optimum from the demand side, how to optimum reallocate the resource such that the consumer can be happy. Obviously, that doesn't work for our situation. We don't have a competitive sector of the supplier side. And here is also from central planner's point of view, but taking into account the environmental cost. And actually his point is, but actually the recycling may be not a good idea because it could be too costly environmentally. Though indeed both of these papers consider the exhaustion of the initial reserve. That is how contribute some to our uh, modeling and the recycling technology is there. We could use it, okay? And of course, they don't have the mind at that moment in the 70s, the critical mineral, yes. Yes, yeah, 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 yes, I will do that, yeah, yes. Yes, perfectly substitute, yeah, yeah. It, there were some uh, group actually in Toulouse, there were a group of uh, the scholars working on the situation that they too are not perfectly substitutable, but they focus more on the growth. From the growth point of view, instead of from the marketing point of view, the my, more macro. So I didn't mention that group of the literature here because our framework is more goes to the micro, yeah. So for our case, on the one side, the uh, recycling technology is not there. And on the other side, they didn't consider the minimum market requirement for, to guarantee the transition to the clean technology to continue. We need to impose this minimum market re uh, input, otherwise, Either we need to, for example, EU or US need to look for substitution. For example, if China says, okay, we are not going to export a rare earth element to you, but some, some other thing needs to be done. And if we only consider dual poly competition, there is only one importer, one exporter there, if nobody buy you, uh, is uh, no use useless. So obviously that not be the situation. And they didn't, of course, as I said before, didn't consider the market structure is more, both sides is a competitive market. So for the case, take into account the resource is exhaustible and there is a minimum requirement and among different countries, it's rather the work of Whitehead and Zihand about the uh, phosphorus competition. Phosphorus is critical fertilizer for farmland. So we need to use as a fertilizer. It's supported by the raw, limited raw material of phosphoric rock. And they both model indeed consider the minimum re input requirement to guarantee the world food supply. Okay? But they didn't model exactly or explicitly the exhaustion of the rock. It's rather saying, okay, the technology of recycling is there. The poor country can, doesn't have the technology. That is not because the technology is there. That's because they were poor. Rather, the rich country can do it. OK? So there is a redistribution about food or the fertilizer. So the technology is there, and they didn't model the uh, exhaustion situation. It's just a mention, OK, we need the recycling. So our problem. We need to consider there's a minimum input requirement from the market, and there's a limited resource. At the same time, the recycling technology is not yet there. And uh, there is a competition between exporter and the importer. So except the first one, all the others actually is in line with the literature of Das Kupta and Stiglitz in the 80s about the uh, the deplotable resource and uh, backstore technology. Okay, in that in that study, in this group of studies, it's mainly take uh, considered about natural gas, oil, and so on. The energy sector that that uh, they could be exhausted, and then need to looking for backstop substitution. And 
They indeed investigate that, that how they have a few different papers and investigate the competition between the, two, the importer exporter and the different kind of market structure and different kind of game, the uh, competitive game, no monopoly or oligopoly and different kind of strategy, open roof, Markovian, Stackerberg, and so on. However, even that work doesn't, cannot read uh, applied to the critical mineral directly, the main reason is the recycling depending on the vir virgin resource, depending on the extraction of the original resource. But backstock technology doesn't need to depend on that. That is a criti critical uh, situation that is the importing country needs to depending on the exporting country's strategy. And here also, backstore technology, if it's there, it can satisfy the market without considering the extraction market. But for the recycling, that's not the case. And the backstore technology, in that case, the price, just depending on the investment to develop the technology, it could independent of the resource market. But here, the recycling the same mineral and input into the same market, then if the, the recycling sector is big enough, it end up from monopoly to duopoly. So it has impact on the price as well. And the exporter can control this, how much to export. So it's still different from the existing literature. And of course, so we take all those into account, but still have something we didn't take into account. So far, at this work, we do not consider the demand side. And we do not do exactly the comparison on the different structure. I will have one social planner that is the either supranational institution can allocate, okay, for example, the two country, the, the two side has agreement or the International Energy Agency or you sign kind of agreement, okay, you have to guarantee the market supply, some kind of situation because that is a, a good or whatever. But I do not consider the social planner's issue with the uh, competition, directly competition. Uh, I also didn't consider the export also do the recycling. Actually, for the rare earth element, China also invests heavily on this topic. Not only US and EU invest. And European Horizon 2020 has quite a lot of uh, projects related to the rare earth element study, investigation, including the recycling. And uh, I didn't consider the scrapping market, and there's no R&D sector for the when to develop the technology. I suppose the technology is there. If it comes later, it's less costly. If it comes earlier, it's more costly. But I didn't explicitly moderate. And there's no uncertainty. But all those could be for the future study. OK? So question clear, why we need it, and what is the state of art? And then the question is, how to do that? OK, let's first, some notations. IXT is the extraction rate of the non-renewable resource. IS0 is the initial reserve. IST is the reserve at time t. Obviously, the dynamic is the standard. And capital IXT is accumulated extraction, which means it's already taken it out, which means is IS0 minus uh, capital IST. And y, small yt is the recycling, is the opposite of this one, small ist. And the capital Y is the part already recycled, at least recycled one time. And capital T is a moment recycling technology is ready. And we have a particular constraint that is this one, the recyclable or already recycled should know more than what is already supplied to the market. That is the difference compared to the backstock technology substitution situation. The eta is the share which is, can be recycled, okay, recyclable. And the other part either is still in the market to use or is permanently lost. 
for example, rare earth element or the lithium battery in this computer, but it's still in use, it cannot be recycled. In some of the modeling, had this mistake, it supplied to the market, it immediately go back for recycling. But it's easier for some part of the modeling, but losing some other part. So here, yes. Uh, no, not at this moment. No, okay. not at this moment. Yeah, it's only partial equilibrium from the uh, resource sector. Yeah, it's very specific. We don't have more than that. It better help, but then you will see with the tar development, the uh, result is already complicated enough. So that one should continue for the next paper. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, before I continue, the repeating recycling is possible. So capital T is a moment to recycle. The good news is if repeating, re repeated recycling is possible, the total recyclable resource could be much larger than the initial resource. And for example, until the resource the after re uh, recycling, some part was lost, some part is in the market, and you could continue doing this. It could be much larger than the initial resource if the, uh, the rate is higher. Okay, that is uh, like uh, the steel could almost like 90% can be recycled, but the others depending on different kind of situations. Okay. And obviously, this recycling is more optimistic. That is in line with uh, Weinstein and Tucker is more optimistic than the gross estimation. Because in gross estimation, he considers recycling, but it's recycling only once. No repeating recycling. Yes. Yeah, recyclable, yeah. So far, it's constant over time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, if it's changing with time, for example, with technology progress, it could be more, yeah, indeed, it could be even more optimistic than my estimation here, yeah. Okay, so benefit function and cost function, and employing the critical mineral generate benefit, obviously, otherwise we don't use it. And to make things easier, I pick up the linear quadratic functional form, but there are some literature to base it on. Uh, so that's not that bad. And B0 is a parameter multiplied by the two resource, and there is a cost of using this resource. And there's a minimum requirement. It's strictly larger than zero. For the central planner's problem, maybe not the critical, but for the competition, it is critical. And uh, the, there is a minimum requirement because if you say, okay, the minimum requirement is just about zero, but there's something positive, it's changing the structure. But if there is just a literal earth element here, there, is not enough for the market to, to, to grow. And the cost, uh, two kinds of cost. Extraction has a cost. Extraction cost depending on two parts. One is uh, uh, how much to extract. It's also depending on the resource, how much already supplied to the market. So with more and more extracted, that is capital X, it became harder and harder, more and more costly. Okay, and here is, this part is depending on how much you would like to extract, and there is cost-saving technology such that, okay, before is more costly than uh, later to extract it. And uh, C0 is kind of a scaling parameter, and if there is no extraction, obviously the cost is zero. So the cost function is not exactly continuous. And the recycling cost is very much similar to this one. But here, to make things easier, we do not uh, take into account the learning by doing the more you recycle, the, the cheaper. So temporarily, let's just focus on this one. OK, that's the benefit and the cost function. We have two basic assumptions. The first one is initially, extraction is cheaper than recycling. That is the easy assumption. The second one is benefit from the critical mineral is sufficiently high. 
That is how we need it. Otherwise, okay, we could use something else to replace it. So these are the two basic assumptions. And then I consider, in, so far, consider two different market structure. One is there is a supranational institution that that making the social plan in order to take care of the clean technology transition, we had to do like this and that. So that is the case. Another one is, okay, the two countries exporter guarantee, I give you the minimum market demand, uh, but there is a competition between the exporter and the importer. Okay, let's first for, so there's a basic, I call it the benchmark, that is how there is a smaller B, it means a benchmark result from the supranational. TB is a moment, recycle is available. The social planner's choice obviously is how much the extraction rate, the recycling rate, if it exists, and the benefit minus the two cost. Okay? And the constraint, the first one, Instead of using the ice, I use the minus ice, which is supplied to the market, make the calculation much easier. And later on, the intuition is also easier. And the y t capital Y, obviously, is what is the recycled. And before this TB, there is no recycling. After that, it could be latter equal to zero. There is no reason the technology is ready. We should use it immediately. We could wait. And that these two are the particularly uh, constrained. The first one is minimum requirement to the market for the transition to cleaner technology. This one is one state variable depending on the second state variable. That makes the actually later the calculation very complicated. If it's just a finite domain constraint, it's still possible. Uh, like the IXBT should know more than the initial reserve. It's a fixed boundary is fine, but here makes things quite complicated. Okay, before we see the optimum choice, there is one basic uh, trivia solution that is the minimum supply. Given, okay, that is the minimum requirement the market needed. So there is a minimum supply that is these two added together reach to the minimum. We don't give you more, just that is the situation. Obviously, that is the case if before that uh, recycling technology is available, the extraction reach to the minimum. But if it's available, it's just uh, supplied by the recycling, which gives us the information the recycling technology should wait until the original resource is exhausted. So that is this condition, which gives us when the technology should be ready, the recycling technology should be ready. And then basing on this, we have the initial reserve, we have the mar minimum market demand, and we could calculate the, when the technology should be ready, and then determine how we should invest on R&D in order to be ready at the, exactly that moment. If it's too early, then it's too costly. If it's too late, ah, sorry, there is not yet ready, there is no supply in the market. Okay? And we, that, about this repeated recycling, the problem is what well, some part we need to imagine the situation. The extraction from somewhere comes up, and obviously it's easy to imagine the critical mineral, for example, rare earth or lithium battery, is in this computer or in a car, and they come to be recycled at different date. Okay, it's not exactly at the same time. To simplify the situation, uh, Swan has a kind of assumption saying that the production made of aluminum, remember his work was uh, inspired by the aluminum competition, all had the same lifetime before becoming scrapped and therefore available for recycling. And he adjusts the time to be used is kind of average lifetime. For example, the aluminum used for packing the food or the plane, obviously the life uh, time is not the same. So, but however, if you sum up them together, taking average, there are some kind of average. And then the recycling is, okay, that is the first group scrapped from the market, and then the next one piles up like this. 
and the recycling starting from this group and so on, then we can date that, okay, this is the first generation recycling. After recycling, it goes back to the pile, and that is the second generation recycling. That is how the repeating recycling happened. This model, as Swan's original center, the simplest one for the remodeling to give us some information, but obviously it's not exactly the reality. As we said, some comes earlier, enter the recycling earlier than the others. But so far, if we're using, for example, the overlapping generation model integral of, indeed is it's more realistic, but added a lot of difficulties mathematically. So, so far, let's stay with the simplest one. If based on the simplest calculation, the first duration of the recycling finished at this moment, this part, 8 is 0, this part is recyclable, and divided by the minimum market supply plus when the recycling started, that is the next time when the, first gen the second generation well, at the first duration finished, and then of course, after a while, uh, after a few times recycling, it's no longer working anymore. Either after so many, the next period, even you recycle all the recyclable, is not sufficient to mar satisfy the market demand. Of course, the market demand could increase over time if you just multiply by exponential function with growth rate, it doesn't change fundamentally the, the story. Uh, or even you recycle everything is not enough compared what is already in the market. It's another way to say it's not sufficient. So from this minimum supply, the recycling cannot permanently solve the critical mineral issue. Pessimistic or optimistic, that is the thing. So then minimum supply does not mean that he's the optimum one. So we have the optimum supply. In the first part, I consider the situation where uh, there is no cost-saving technology. Okay? Later, I will pick it up that it is is cost-saving technology. So far, let's say uh, there is no cost-saving technology. Then initially, we assume the extraction is cheaper than recycling. So it should be designed such that the recycling technology available at TB and it should be immediately used. The invention and innovation should happen at the same time and at the moment when the natural resource is exhausted. And the supply before it is exhausted, no recycling. Under the central planners issue, there is no recycling. Recycling only starting from when it's available. And before that, that may exist another time, depending on, this is the optimal choice, depending on the optimum choice, is larger or smaller than minimum market demand. If this is based on the combination of a parameter, XB0 is given by this one, and depending on the combination of parameter, if this one initially is larger than the minimum demand, then the supply actually decreasing over time, and at TB1, this moment, is reached to the minimum level, and it had to stay at the minimum level until exhausted. But of course, if the combination such that this one initially, it should supply less than the minimum level, however, the minimum level is required. So it had to be starting from the beginning, re supply the, at the minimum level, okay? Of course, the combination of parameter, both cases are possible. And when the, sub, the recycling is possible, uh, here, if it's possible, then we're only depending on the recycle technology and the extraction is no longer there because there's no more to extract. And here also, we need to compare these two. The larger one will be picked up. And this one is also monotonically decreasing over time. If initially, when it's kicking off, it's less than minimum level, then it should stay with the minimum level. And we could consider, based on our previous uh, uh, assumptions, we could consider when the recycling finished. Okay? So 
That is the situation, and of course, repeating a few times, like the minimum of supply situation, it will be exhausted, whatever the situation. Well, that's what I said. If we, here we only consider the supply side. If you were combining these two sides together, that should be more complicated for the next paper after we understand how the supply works. Before I consider the real market situation, we also consider the Markovian optimality based on the dynamic programming. We know that using maximum principle and dynamic programming for one decision maker should give us the same result, right? That should give us exactly the same result. However, the dynamic programming, the decision was based on state variable. So the previous case is the social plan as a supranational institution making the plan based on time. And here is the decision is make, okay, this much already supplied to the market, this much is already recycled, so let's see how our optimum supply change based on the state. It's just a restate the same result as before, but differently, it's much easier to take into account the cost saving technology. Okay, here, uh, suppose one condition is uh, the nature, the original resource is not exhausted, the recycle is also not exhausted what is already supplied to the market. And then the result is rather straightforward. If the extraction is more social desirable, this W is the social value based on the two state variable, also depending on time t. And that is a marginal uh, value function with respect to the extraction. And minus the cost from the extraction cost. And this part is the social value of the recycling. If the extraction is more social desirable than the recycling, then we're depending on extraction. And the extraction is given by, like before, the maximum of the uh, optimum choice and the minimum level. The same if the opposite is true, recycling is more desirable, then we should use the recycling force first. So the assumption is where the resource is not exhausted. If the recycling is more social desirable, then we use recycling first. Yes. Which extent of the W Y versus W X can be different since that they can be same object with two resources, whether it is produced with recycling or Uh, they they could be different. Uh, yeah, I didn't have uh, the value function. They could be different. Uh, actually, it's not here. In the intermediate, it's not exactly the issue, but it's enter the value function differently. It's the objective. Wait, but let's go back. Okay. Here, it entered here. This part is similar, but it's entered the course differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no. For the band part, it's, it's the same, indeed, indeed. But the value function is the, the all the sum together. Yeah. Yes. It's exactly the intuition. Is exactly the the cost, the cheaper one should be used first. So the intuition is straightforward. The cheaper one should be used first. If the recycling is cheaper, then we use the recycling first. And the in Interesting question is that if the resource is not exhausted, but the recycling is cheaper, actually, we should actually exhaust the recyclable first. And of course, if the recyclable is already exhausted and they still have some virgin resource not used, so we need to go back to use the virgin resource, but the recycling is cheaper. So the coexistence of extraction and recycling and the social planner. That is not the case in most of the studying in the social planner or competitive market. These two are, uh, 30 seconds? Ah, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now I can jump directly to the conclusion. <laughs> Yes, here is this two sector could coexist, but conditionally the recycling is cheaper, social, more social desirable. Okay, we will come back to this case when we consider the Markovian competition. Uh, 
So now let's consider that is indeed there is competition between exporter and importer. And let's call it still the cutter or the monopoly supplier. Uh, the inverse demand function, again, we pick up the linear quadratic to make it easier. Here, Tn is the moment when the invention is ready, the recycling technology is ready. Before that, there is no recycling. And after that, there is recycling. And of course, the cutter's objective is maximize the profit from uh, doing supply to the market and facing uh, those kind of constraints very much the same as before. And the cutter has some kind of dilemma. On the one side is uh, if just the supply the to the market at the minimum level occur, you, I have to supply to, that is my social norm or whatever, I need to, to do supply to the market at the minimum level, or I don't supply to the market. That force, if that is the situation, that force is the importing country need to looking for substitution. Is a backstop technology or another material which does not depend on you or depending on someone else? So then what you had, given we only consider two markets, uh, two country situation, what you had the original resource is useless, which is not the case of Russian gas. If they don't sell to Europe, they could sell it to someone else. Here is not the case. So they cannot decrease too much the supply to the market. But at the same time, if we supply a lot to the market, and then the importer accumulate a lot of recyclable, hey, I don't need to, depending on you, you can be bye-bye. So that is this trade-off here. And for the importer, similar kind of situation, the first period actually has nothing to do. The exporter will determine how much to supply to you. But in order to say the objective function, we keep it here, is more the second part, how much to recycle. Okay? And the constraint uh, is a similar. They have this kind of constraint, the demand. This, this one is the same as before. And this, we have the initial condition. Okay? That is the importers, of course, the importer, depending on which strategy we choose, Markovian or open loop, uh, the state where it plays different roles. And the importer also has a dilemma. The recycling technology re available as soon as possible, then this way, I don't need to depending on the exporter. But on one side, that demands a lot of input for the R&D. On the other side, uh, if you already have the recycled technology, you can recycle, but you don't have much to recycle. You still need to depend on the exporting country. Like currently, the rare earth element, the wind turned by the computer, and so on. we don't have much in the market we can recycle, even the technology is available. So there is no point. So you're also facing this kind of trade-off. Then the question is, what are the optimum strategy? Supply. There exists a few moments. Uh, one is that is the case that technology is a part, the technology, recycling technology is already ready. We can use it. And if so, there were time TN2, TN3, TN4, and TN5. And TN3 is the moment the virgin resource is exhausted. Okay, the virgin resource is exhausted. After that, there is no more original resource. And TN2 is the joint supply, XO plus YO, is monotonically decreasing if based on the maximum uh, optimum strategy. That is this one plus this one. If this two, we can prove, is monotonically decreasing, T N2 is the moment reaching to the minimum requirement. Okay, so this joint supply to the market decreasing over time at TN2 reach to the minimum requirement of the market. And if at that moment the virgin resource is not exhausted yet, but it also could be when reached to the minimum level, the virgin resource is already exhausted, the IXO already out of the market. So we have the two situations. If it's not 
already exhausted. That is the case. And then y0 should be maximum of these two. That is from the optimum control. And this is a minimum market demand. Okay, and Tn3 is that is x1, xo is no longer there, so it's only depending on uh, yo. That is the situation that is uh, from that moment on, it's only depending on the recycling until N Tn5, which is a moment uh, the supply of recycling is also reached, uh, is exhausted for the first cycle. And, of course, it could be the case before reaching to the minimum supply level, the original resource is already exhausted. And then we still have these two situations. Uh, there exists another one. It could be uh, that is decreasing the supply from the recycling, decreasing over time, then is reached to the minimum level. But, of course, we always need to take the maximum maximum of this one compared with the minimum level. If it's already reached to the minimum, it had to start with the minimum instead of decreasing to the minimum. Okay, so that is, uh, here I already mentioned the supply is monotonically decreasing in terms of interest, uh, interest rate, and the market price is monotonically increasing in terms of the uh, interest rate, which are the standard hoteling uh, information. Here I already mentioned. Uh, yeah, that is mentioned for someone interested in the strategy. This one, the, it is open loop strategy, but it's also Markovin, but it's not Markovin subgame perfect. It's depending on the initial condition. It doesn't depend on the state, so it is Markovin, but it's depending on the initial condition, so it's not subgame perfect. And we're still looking for the subgame perfect equilibrium as well. That is, uh, now, so far, it's the strategy when the recycling technology is ready. Before that, we should have those uh, transversality condition matching up of these two period model. And the situation is that is the potential optimum supply to the market, depending on the starting point, which can be calculated. And if it's less than the minimum market supply, if so, then it had to supply to the market based on the minimum level. But if it's larger, then it could be the case that it always larger than the minimum supply, or actually there are some moment TN1, such that is supply is starting to be high, and at some moment reach to the minimum level. And then the next period when the recycling technology is available, then I just take my optimum choice. I don't need to care about the minimum market requirement because the recycler will consider about that. It's no longer my business. So that is, of course, to close the model, we need to have another transversality condition. Then all those uh, undetermined parameters will be solved. At least in theory, we have how many equations, how many unknown variables. Of course, to explicitly solve them, that's a different story. OK? That is about the open loop strategy. And we also consider the Markovin strategy Given before, we said under social planner, we consider the cost and the cheaper one should use first that could coexist of extraction and the recycling. Here, we do not consider the cost. We first consider the case without cost saving, such that the game is autonomous over infinite time. So the value function could directly depending on the two state variables instead of also changing with time. But, but there is no guarantee under Markovin strategy the exporter will not stop supply to the market. Okay? Because I mean, before the recycling technology is ready, that is rather easy. Okay, you just supply to the market. But when the recycling technology is ready, the question is, will the 
exporter stop supply to the market. Under social planner, we already saw if they the top cost saving technology, the cheaper one should use first. And here, the decision based on the true stock. When I saw how much I already supplied to the market, I saw how much you already used, recycled. My decision could be I stop supply to the market in order to gain my monopoly position later. Actually, we can prove that uh, that's indeed can happen under two assumptions. One is uh, X, that is what is already supplied to the market, is sufficiently small. The other one is Y is sufficiently close to 8X, which is recyclable. So the first one is what supply to the market is sufficiently small. We don't consider that situation. That more often the case is uh, recycled technology is not yet there. And it's more important, interesting is to see the second one. Okay, the intuition is straightforward. Hey, hey, you are going to exhaust your recycle bought resource. I will stop supply to the market. And then, of course, you cannot rely on me. Then you're using, based on your recyclable resource until you finish, then I will be the monopoly again. Okay, instead of facing the duopoly, I'm changing back to the monopoly, yes. Is that a good yes, yeah, yeah, that's indeed. But of course, there is a basic assumption here is that exists Markov and Nash equilibrium. Actually, we realize because our one state depending on the other state, our choice domain is triangular changing with the the boundary is changing over time, and we, so far, we still did not yet prove the existence of markov nash equilibrium. Under some cases, assumptions can prove the existence of markov nash equilibrium. Though it's a linear quadratic everywhere, that initially we thought, okay, we give a linear quadratic, at least we could say something explicitly, but until when we are working here, we realize because of the, the uh, uh, definition domain, we, in some cases, we cannot prove the exist Markov and Nash equilibrium. But of course, at the same time, we also did the mean so far that doesn't exist. So it could be the situation under some situation there is no Markov and Nash equilibrium. Then what to say we, we are still struggling. So, so far, if there is, Markov and Nash equilibrium, that is indeed the exporter may face in the situation that they stop supply to the market. Okay, as a conclusion, recycling can postpone the. Ex yes, sorry. No, 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 it's decreasing. decreasing. Yeah, it's decreasing because there is eight each period of recycling, some part is permanently lost. Right, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it's 100% recycled, you're right. And then if we take into account the market demand is increasing, then it's not the case again. No, 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 yeah. Sense. I was just wondering about this, uh, the stop and go. Yeah, yeah. You know, relation to the stuff versus. Yeah, yeah, that is depending on the eight is strictly less than one. Yeah. Uh, uh. So, the conclusion, recycling indeed can postpone the exhaustion, but cannot postpone indefinitely. So, still, substitution using the resource or other technology is required. And the cheaper one, under the planned economy, the cheaper resource should be used first. And it may exist that is the recycling and the extraction coexist for some time. And uh, well, for the other marketing that to coexist, uh, that is rather standard. It may happen that the new result is, it may happen the, if we consider only two country situation, the exporter stops supply to the market at some moment. So 
if, for example, the Earth moment, if indeed the exit Markov strategy, maybe China one day, okay, you, if you are bad to me, I don't supply to you. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Well, I have one is more on the, the, extent, the extensions of your model. But yes. You said that for the next paper, you want to include the uh, genome side as well. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about uh, how you, you can uh, find a way to account for the uh, change in prefer preferences of uh, consumers for the recycled group instead of for the uh, uh, classic or typical? Uh, here, actually, this, they were, these two are perfect substitute between the recycler and the virgin, uh, virgin. So from the consumer's point, they cannot see. So they, we buy a computer, we don't exactly see. Sometimes, indeed, for example, clothes, uh, indeed, some of the clothes mentioned, the material are completely recycled. So the, the, uh, in this exists, but when you buy a car, usually we don't ask, uh, is this part is recycled or other part is not? We don't know exactly. So we just uh, buy something to use. Yeah. But in, in most of your cases, the, the con, I mean, not the, the consumer, I mean, it's intermediate products that the producers are going to buy this kind of, uh, of mineral. Yes, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. This is the first one I should say working on the, because I was checking the literature about this part, this is the first work, at least to our knowledge, taking this into account, all those aspects. Yeah. And then we're already facing the problem we cannot prove the existence. Thank you.